it's time for Adventures in Careerland. And today, we've got a very special edition of our third edition. I'm Adriano Magnifico. I'm the Lou Riel School Division Career Development Consultant. And I'm at the Broadcast Media Studio in the Lou Riel Arts and Tech Center. This is one of 13 programs in this building that train students in a lot of extra very cool skills, applied learning skills, technical skills, along with the academic programs that they get back at their home schools. It's the best of both worlds. It's a really great thing to do. So I'm very fortunate to be working with two of these young student producers who are in the broadcast media program. One is Zoe. Zoe, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm right. And she's also working on, this is a lot of work because she's working with me on this podcast, helping to produce it. She's also running her own podcasts and they have other assignments to do to learn the Adobe family suite and all. And they're doing all kinds of very cool projects in this program. And of course, Akira. Akira, how are you, sir? I'm well. How are you? I'm very good. Akira last time, he's, he's dressed a little more respectably, I think. He's wearing the McDonald's uh, Battlestar regalia last year or last week. And uh, that was... That was very cool. I just noticed, now that you've told me, Akira, you said there was a collaboration between some rock star, some pop star, and corporations that's happening all the time. Another, I just saw this on television, another rapper or something is connected with McDonald's. Is that correct? Or is it the same guy? If it's Travis Scott, then it's the same guy. Oh, my gosh. So this is the way to go. This is the way you have to make money in COVID. you got to start connecting in, in, in different ways. Yeah. How's the COVID thing going for you? You too. How's it going right now? You surviving? Getting tired? I'm sur- I'm surviving. I'm I'm always tired, so that hasn't <laughs> changed. <laughs> but is the variant worrying you a bit now that this may prolong and go a little longer than we expect? I'm not I'm not too worried. I'm just more annoyed that it's <laughs> it's come and it's canceling all of like our activities and stuff like other things that are important to us like the program. That's right. That's right. How about you, Akira? Uh, I kind of expected this to not be a quick fix. It was going to take a while. So I'm not too surprised that we're a little bit more prolonged now, but uh, I'm surviving. Uh, I agree with right Zoe. On. I'm always tired, so it's nothing new for me. Right on. Well, you're, well, you're high school students. That's what Tired is part of the gig, right? Yeah. Good for you guys. I'm never tired. I leap out of bed wondering, what will the day bring next? I can't wait for it to start. Not Okay. <laughs> anyway, Michael, how are you? We have a guest today, Michael, who is a former Lou Real School Division student from Dakota Collegiate. And he is from uh, Dakota, but he's also a participant in a program we're going to talk about called Propel that he chose to do in the uh, during his grade 11 year. Michael, and he's in the, I would say Michael is in the University of Winnipeg Business Administration Program. Michael, how are you? Doing good. You can call me Mitchell, by the way, but I'm oh, doing yeah, good. Oh, yeah, Michael. Sorry, Mitch, 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 Michael. Oh, my gosh, I've been doing this to all these guys. This is an old man you're talking to, okay? So don't don't worry. I made this mistake. I had a class this morning. I was calling somebody by a completely different name, and at the end she said, you know, that's not my name, and I went, well, thanks for telling me that now. Would have been useful early on in the conversation. Anyway, hey, Mitchell, you're at. where, where are you right now? Right now, I'm at the uh, the University of Winnipeg. Right on. Hey, tell us about now. You're in the University of Winnipeg uh, Business Administration program. Tell us about that program. What you're doing there. What you hope to get out of it. Yeah, well, I'm in the um, the marketing concentration of it. So basically, going into it, I knew I kind of wanted to be more in marketing as opposed to economics or finance, any other kind of uh, business admin. The, what I look at the future, I kind of see right now there's so much going on with data collection from so many like social media platforms. I think it'd be really cool to kind of be on the inside part of that to kind of see how that all gets dissected and, and spread around and, and on and on. But yeah, it, it's been good. I've been uh, taking a nice variety of courses, which I didn't think I'd be doing. So I'm broadening my horizons a bit, but it's been good so far. All right. Now you were in Dakota. You spent. You're a K to twelve Luriel School Division kid, right? You went to elementary school where? Uh, Highbury School. Highbury School, and then you went right from Highbury. 
right into Dakota, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, what was your Dakota experience like? Like the courses, those kinds of things. What did you choose when you were in Dakota? What kind of courses? You know, I was thinking about that the other day. Um, I feel like I kind of did the bare minimum in Dakota, and it's one of the things I regret. But I, I took a, I really appreciated they had a few business courses there. They had a, a futures and business course, uh, a few where you kind of learn very basic things that I think should be instituted in all education, like how taxes work, uh, realistic career paths, that kind of thing. We actually used um, my blueprint in uh, one of those courses, which was uh, pretty interesting. Oh, but, um, nice. yeah, it was good. I know Dakota was kind of known as the, the Winnipeg High School with a lot of sports teams, a lot of great sports teams. I always kind of steered clear away from that. But, um, yeah, I just had a great time there. Uh, really good teachers. A lot of teachers who've been there for a while who are really passionate. Right on. Hey, now, you said you did the bare minimum, which is very interesting. What 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 did you mean by that? Because you got all your credits, you got through, and you passed with a good average, right? So what did you mean yeah. you did the bare minimum? That's an interesting statement. Well, back back in my high school days, I, uh, I never opted to go for any extracurricular activities. So I had a lot of friends who were either in band or in uh, – we had a few – computer defense uh, activities you could join in on. And uh, I heard a lot about them. I heard a lot about these uh, these clubs and events. And I never really thought I, it would be for me. But, um, yeah, looking back, I think if I were to go back, I'd definitely try a few more things. But um, by bare minimum, I still went to all my classes, had a good time, had a good... Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Look. Yeah. Because high school does a lot of things, right? It's not just about the academic program. It's about the people you met. It's about the socialization. Yeah. It's about building a lot of skills. What kind of skills? When you left Dakota then, which is, I think, Louis Riel's largest school population-wise, what kind of skills do you think you left with from Dakota? Good question. I mean, definitely just studying skills. They're always evolving through the uh school system right but um i kind of learned okay you know in elementary school you kind of have to take courses you don't really like but it's it's the very surface so <laughs> elementary like, school you were beaten down in elementary school taking courses you I, didn't like. yeah. <laughs> I love that i learned um okay there's courses i don't, I don't want to take i don't think i'll need to use them in real life <laughs> whatever real life is but um i kind of learned okay sometimes you have to do something and you'd take away things from that course that you wouldn't from any course you wanted to take. So, okay, you know, so, now, okay. So I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you saying school was a lot of hoops. You had to jump through. You're taking <laughs> things that you're supposed to take and you're just going through the hoops. Like you always did pretty well in school though. Didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did my part. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You're jumping through the hoops in elementary school, but let's be clear to school. It taught you to read and write, right? Yeah. I mean, exactly. And, at a pretty high level, in my experience with you. So I like to think. <laughs> I know, for sure. I, in my experience with you, I, I, I think you're a good thinker. I also think it built some, because I saw this in you, I, I think it built some real uh, critical thinking skills in you. Don't you think about that? Like, like when you said you didn't participate in extracurriculars, those are often things people do, but not everybody does them. So right. I... A, a lot do like there's you're right about the sports. The sports are for a certain group of people who really want and or who are selected. Sports is one of those places where a place like Dakota, you're selected to be in those sports. So you can yeah. try out, but not make it. Uh, yeah. They have other pieces like intramurals to do and stuff like that, but to play at the higher levels, like what, what do you think at the high level you got out of school or was it just this kind of rite of passage you had to go through? And now you chose, you said you had an interest in business courses, right? So you're taking some of the business courses there. Did that spur, was there something about business that spurred you on a bit? You know what? That's a uh, definite, I remember in grade nine. So that must've been, that was like 2014, 2015. In one of my business courses, we, uh, we had like a stock simulator. Uh, oh, right if in minutes behind the real market or an hour or something like that. And, it was really interesting to kind of, because before that, I, I had no idea 
what stocks were, how they worked, what caused them to perform the way they do. And I remember that was like 2015 and I put a hundred thousand fake dollars into Tesla. Oh jeez, You wish you really so did I, that, right? I know I'm a little upset. It was just a simulation, but, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. but um, I yeah, definitely learned some interesting things there. It, it was just nice to, um, I mean, any education is always going to be helpful in the real world. There are things that do come into play. Like you mentioned, critical thinking, uh, High school is one of those places where it is, uh, you're given the opportunity to have a lot more freedom. So time management's a big thing, but for critical thinking, you kind of do get to have some freedom in the courses you want to take. And I'm happy I took some of the business ones. They led me in a good path. So that's a great point there, Mitchell. So do you think it's really important that students have spaces in school to think and like independently and to think about what connects to them? Do you think that's important? Absolutely. Because, you know, after high school, if you do want to pursue higher education, there's, you know, there's money involved, right? So if you want to kind of test drive a, a subject or a field, you're going to be up to paying, you know, a few hundred dollars at the very minimum. So high school is a great, great place where there's no financials involved. You just kind of get time to uh, explore what you want to go into in the future. And the younger you find out what you want to do, the better, right? Right on. Although, you know what, often I say, I'm working with a group of grade nines right now, and they're all very creative and digital and interesting. And uh, some of them are, even in grade nine, are thinking, I got to figure out what I want to do. And I'm trying to say to them, don't worry about it. Just, just try things, gravitate to things. Um, Try things out. Uh, Step outside of your boundary a little bit with support from people around you. Uh, You'll learn a lot more doing that and about where the right fit is. Do you think, now you've gone into business, but you did something in high school that was really interesting because you had a chance in grade 10 to join a program off of the Dakota beaten path. And so there was a presentation about the Propel program at Nelson Mack. And tell us a bit about that program and what seemed to attract you to it because they select people for that. That's not just something you can jump into. You apply for that program and you chose to apply for that program. So, uh, let me let everyone know here what you must have been searching a little bit too. As much as you say, ah, the bare minimum experience, kind of, you know, going through, I love that, going through the hoops in elementary school. I love that. Uh, what was it about the Propel program that made you think, I, I, I got to try this? Well, I, it was exciting to see something new. I mean, at that point, I think the program had only been out for maybe a year or two prior. That's right. right. Tell us what it was about though. Like what, like what, 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 how did they present the program to you and what attracted you to that? It was presented to me. Basically, I remember being thrown into an office and my principal kind of explained the program and they said, you're basically going to be given a term. Um, You get to pursue one of your passions and you'll be given credit instead of just being in regular classes. You'll get to have, the opportunity and freedom to pursue what you want to do. So for me, I was always interested in business. So it was a great opportunity. And I remember thinking, okay, if I do this, you know, worst case scenario, it'll be an interesting experience. But, you know, looking back maybe in 20 years, I think I would regret not taking it. So it was, uh, yeah, it was, uh, I I was very excited for it. It, it, it was almost too good not to try or too interesting not to try. Did it really get your curiosity going? Absolutely. You know, you, you spend most of your life in this education system where everything, you know, it evolves, but it's building off the same principles. And then this new thing comes out of the blue and it's saying, Oh, you're kind of, you're going to be your own boss here. You're kind of, you're going to be given tools and um, some financial help to uh, explore one of your passions. So, yeah. It was very, very intriguing to me. And, and it's kind of weird because I was in the program with you guys a little bit. And it's when you're all first there, it's a hard thing to kind of take in, isn't it? Like you're waiting yeah. for the teacher to tell you what to do, right? Yeah. What was that like? Yeah. Uh, it, was a, it was a shock. You know, you're always used to having assignments due on a certain day or having homework assigned. And here... They just said, okay, once you kind of choose what you want to do, 
you have to, you're, you're credible for what you have to do and how many hours each week you have to put in. So for me, it was, uh, there was definitely some initial shock where I'm like, Oh God, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> well, I think everybody <laughs> felt that way because yeah. you were in charge. You're a grade 11 student in charge of your schedule. You know, right? I'm off to it Red was... Top, the burger joint, if that's the case, honestly. That's... <laughs> and that's what, I, I don't know, that's what, I, I went to Nelson Mac back in the, back in the 30s, and uh, um, <laughs> it was, we were at Red Top all the time, and that's the old little burger diner right beside uh, Nelson Mac. So, how, how did you resist those urges to, to do those kinds of things? You know what I mean? Just to of... go off and kind of lollygag and just to relax. <laughs> I had to learn from experience. So yes. in that in that case, I <laughs> fair share of red top lunches that stretched a little bit too long. <laughs> the forks, the pieces, and you know, you don't realize what you need to do until you don't do it. So that's I would, I'm a little behind. I, I can't be affording to do this, but with time, I, I kind of started to carve out a proper schedule. And towards the end, I think I did a bang up job of maintaining that, but the beginning was rough. Well, what was, now you have to come up with a cool project in there. And I don't recall exactly what your project was. What was it? Explain it a bit. So my project, I wanted to create some kind of online e-commerce business. So I, yes, uh, yes. there was like a station site I'd been following for a while. I, uh, I didn't have any money. I didn't work yet. So it was nice to kind of have other SD throw some money my way to, to invest. So. Basically, I bought a, like a, a package, basically, of returned goods online. So Amazon ships out a bunch of phone cases. Some people don't like them. Some of them are defective. They'll send them back, and they'll auction them off to me. So I got a nice package of assorted goods, and uh, my project was trying to see which platforms to sell them on, the ultimate goal, breaking a profit, but um, it's kind of seeing what it was like to actually sell things online. Pretty cool. So you were actually practicing kind of in real life to be a bit of an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. Oh, that's that was fun. fun. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's a lot of fun. I remember working with you on the project. You did the career canvas too. Do you remember doing that? I sure do, yeah. What was that like? Because I ask, and all my career stuff, and I've created this tool called the Lean Career Design Canvas, and I ask all the students in my courses to complete it. And I, I, I remember presentations. What was it like going through that canvas, which is this notion of figuring out what you want to figure out in your life, doing some soul searching, and then coming up with a plan? What was it like going through that process? It was really interesting because, you know, initially you have an idea and you have a plan. And, of course, in life, things don't always go according to plan. Things come late, come early. So looking back at it, it was really interesting to see what I originally planned and how things ended up. And it wasn't the same, but I'd say it was better overall. It was, it was nice to kind of see where I had come from. Well, you know what I really liked about it is in the, the canvas and even the propel program, it constantly forces you to look inward. You know what I mean? And yeah. you have to learn how to talk about yourself. And I always say to people, there's two things that are going to happen in everyone's life since good old Horace Mann invented public education is you're going to you're going to leave high school everybody does by hook or by crook and you know with distinction or non-distinction or or mediocrity whatever it takes and you're all going to have to talk about yourself to somebody somewhere and i think that's what propel and that's what the canvas those are the kinds of tools and those kinds of programs that really help you do that cuz in high school is it fair to say you didn't do a lot of public speaking yeah, absolutely. You know, you'd have the odd presentation and like yes. maybe a couple times a semester. And, and other than that, um, I mean, before Propel, I don't think I ever really did any public speaking in high school. You'd have to go out of your way to do something extracurricular, which I, I didn't do. So I Propel know. was my first to uh, really improve on that. Right on. And so would you say that one of the one of the things that public education really needs to do is to help people learn how to talk about themselves, not just the course content. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So I can see you, like, I remember talking to you. Oh, my gosh, you're, you're introspective now. Not that you weren't. <laughs> but what, what has this journey been like for you? Like, Mitchell, you're a different guy than when I talked to you last. And that was a long time ago. That was a couple of years ago, right? 
or how long ago? Three years ago? I was 2017. Yes, yeah. so that's three years ago. Wow. Like, you're a different guy. What kind of a different person are you since your high school days? Uh, you know, the university kind of presents a few obstacles when you first go into it. So overcoming those obstacles, for me, they built some kind of character where I'm a bit more confident if things kind of don't go my way. So overall, I think I carry a bit more confidence than I did in high school. And also just um, working like a, a part-time job, especially if it's public facing. Um, that gave me a, a huge chance to uh, you know, just almost practice having conversations with people. And then also when you work with different people, you kind of pick up on their skills and you kind of have this large pool of skills to choose from and you can kind of add them to your own personality. But um, yeah, that's probably been the main thing, honestly, working and um, just overcoming obstacles in university. Right on. So what are the what are the experiences you've chosen? You can see in high school you kind of propel was your big choice, I think, right? That was a big major choice for you. And you moved out of it, got a sense of business. So school school kind of did what it was supposed to do for you, right? It helped you understand that business seems to be where I want to go and check it out. Don't know exactly, but business is kind of that larger general space where that giant cluster where so many things emerge, so many possibilities emerge in a business context. So it kind of helped you in that way. What were the experiences? Can you identify some specific things you've done outside of your high school experience that have been really important to you? Yeah. Um, I mean, first off, post-secondary, it's not for everyone. I had times I didn't think it was for me, but just going through the process of putting yourself in a different situation. Um, for me, going to school downtown was a massive change. And, uh, something like that, it, you do slowly learn lessons and you're kind of at the University of Winnipeg, at least it's kind of situated right in the middle of downtown Winnipeg. Yeah, so, yeah. so you're surrounded by so many different kinds of people and so many different walks of life. So you really get, in a, you get to kind of notice, okay, is the world's a bit bigger than I thought, which is always interesting. Right on. And then right on. just with work, you know, it's, uh, I applied for my current job washing cars. So I was like, I applied for a summer job just to make some money washing cars. And then after washing cars at this rental company in the spring, I started as an intern, which was a, a huge thing for just my, I feel like my, my resume, even but like my personal development, yes. uh, working with, with different kinds of customers and so, back you, end. so you went from the trench pretty much labor work and, yes. and did it well. And you built enough confidence in the team or the team built confidence in you so that they were open to you moving into a different level. What do you think they noticed in you that they thought, wow, this guy shouldn't be doing cars or cleaning cars as much as we appreciate his time and effort and how hard he works. What do you think they saw in you to bring you to the next level? To be honest, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent sure. But one thing that my manager said to me a little while ago, he said, when you came for your interview to detail cars, you were wearing a nice dress shirt, suit pants, nice shoes. You looked like, you know, you're applying for a job. And then apparently the person who was applying for like the, the intern job was just wearing, you know, like a polo shirt and some jeans. And they said right off the bat, they could kind of tell that, okay, this guy kind of wants to do more than just labor work as a part-time gig. And I think slowly, you know, working alongside people, they start to recognize things or learn, oh, you're in university right now. Didn't know that. That's good to know in case you want to be an intern. So Awesome. Awesome. You know what I liked about that story? I have a few stories like that too, but what it does matter, like when you show up the way you did, you're saying to them, I care about how I present myself to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're taking extra care and attention. And they basically told you that. We care that you cared about how you look before us. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I really like that. And what, what's that old saying? Dress for the job you want, not the job you have. That turned out to be pretty true for me in that case. Right on. Hey, Akira's got a thought he wants to share with you. Yeah. Um, when you're talking about, in general, like the way you had your perspective on school, I honestly, like, I completely agree with you. Uh, I'm in grade 12 right now. And... 
I it just happened to me recently when it started to sink in because to be here, uh, I had to finish all my schoolwork for grade 12 in the first semester and then come here for second semester. So when I handed in the last assignment, it kind of sunk into me that from now on, anything I do starting now is going to be in my hands. Like I have control of it now because from K to 12, the school has a structure built so that every student learns these basic skills. But now I yeah. kind of took control of my life and what I want to do later on in my career. So I, I honestly, I agree with everything you were saying, just that when you got into the Propel program, that it was weird for you because you're, you're used to all this structure, but now you have to be, you, you have to be in charge of yourself. So it, it was funny. Cause I, I just went through that probably two months ago when it just sunk in. Oh yeah. You're still recovering then. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. You're recovering uh, school addicts now, kind of thing, right? You're figuring. <laughs> but you know what? It's it's interesting that Akira's saying that because uh, you're in your own propel. Like when you choose an arts and tech center, like and the more I've sp uh, I've spoken to you a couple of times now, Mitchell, you would have been a brilliant in this program, but you weren't even aware of it, right? Yeah, the, like the broadcast good. media program, you would have learned the Adobe Suite. You would have been presenting. You're a good talker. You always were a good talker. I always saw that in you. And and you just have an interest in business and in sharing ideas and communicating and building relationships. And that's that's kind of followed you along in your own way, hasn't it? Yeah, but that program, it, it's such a good thing to have. From what you've told me about it, and I, I looked online, I looked at the, the website. It, it definitely is, it has, a place to to exist and um yeah we were yeah, talking we were talking totally like it's like a mini propel but a little more specified right you're coming in with these skills yeah. but you still work on your own projects and it's like yeah. like, like their podcast like i'm doing with them right now so it, it, it is really really cool that way it has a sense of a school within a school which is what the propel program was and there's 13 programs like that and it's funny that most kids don't choose this stuff because they just kind of go along the beaten path so i love what akira is saying and what you're saying, you have to make a call. It's a it's a tough call to walk off that beaten high school path and say yeah. I, I I want to do it differently. And so, uh, would you say those kinds of decisions are the ones that I've made with the Propel decision or the ATC decision here, the broadcast media? That goes for you too, Zoe. With those, with the ATC choice to be here. I mean, M M Mitchell's talking about Propel, but you guys are in your mini Propel. Would you say these kinds of decisions are the ones that are making the most difference in your life? I, I, I think so, yeah, because yeah, cause when I was at my other school, like, we didn't really get to make, de like, all those decisions. Like, we were kind of told what we had to do, but now that I, I got to choose to come to ATC, so, like, that was a big decision for me. And then now we're making all these decisions in the program, like, who do we want to interview for our podcasts for one of our assignments or – like what we want, like now we're making a commercial to like to say why you should come to ATC. Like we have to figure out, we have to make the decision of how we want to promote the school. See, that's pretty cool. So it, it is an inside out process, right? And so when you're doing it out there now, what advice Mitchell would you give to anyone who's out there? Like you're out there right now, you've been to high school. These guys are still in high school. They're in their mini propel kind of program, which is ATC now. What kind of, advice would you give to a young person in grade 11 like you were at the time if you could if if, if you were in front of a room talking to him you tell a bit of your story which is kind of interesting because it's not you know i was the big jock or i was on this the cyber defense team in the cyber titan competition you're kind of an average would you say you're kind of an average student in your time there absolutely you know you watch like any late night comedy about like an american high school like that that group of friends are kind of like they're not you know, overly popular. They're not the lowest of the low. They're just kind of hanging in there. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. So what advice would you give to a, a, a grade 11 average student sitting in the classroom if they said, Mitchell's going to come in and talk to you. He's going to tell you. He's got some good advice for you. What would you tell him? Take, so take as many opportunities as you can. I know you speak a lot about collecting dots. Yes. Uh, collect as many dots as you can. For me, a massive dot was Propel. Uh, it just taught me so many things. First of all, it's great on a resume. It's yes. absolutely to show 
a future employer that you chose to go above and beyond and do something a bit risky. Um, but even just the lessons that you learned, I mean, Mr. Magnifico, you taught me quite a few things about what the real world is. We went to Tigers then. We went to quite a few really interesting events I never would have been to otherwise. Um, I would have to say just keep taking opportunities. And of course, only if, you know, they're of interest to you. If you know, since day one, you're going to be a doctor and you have your whole kind of education plan, it may not be the best for you. You know, keep succeeding in school and, and doing what you're doing. But for me, I was just, you know, an average guy. And I had nothing to lose by kind of risking my normal education a bit to learn something a bit new. So I like take that. as many. I, I had nothing to lose by risking my education. No, I love that line. <laughs> well, you awesome. have to understand. Like it's so, it's such a foreign thing. Okay, yes. you're gonna take three to school. We're gonna put you in a room, and it's up to you. Now, I'm just curious. Now, you chose the UW business program. Talk about that a bit. And why didn't you choose the Asper one? Like, or why didn't you choose the Red River College one, business admin? There's usually three options for you guys, right? Yeah, so, yeah, usually three. Which for one? me? Go ahead. Since I was an average student in high school. I didn't have the marks to get into Asper initially. I, I could have gone into U1 at the University of Manitoba and then kind of progressed into there. Um, but with me, one thing that really kind of interested me is I've since I was young, I always wanted to work in downtown Winnipeg. I'm not sure what it was. It's just kind of the atmosphere. Um, I thought it'd be really interesting. Yeah. And um, I knew quite a few people who had gone to the University of Winnipeg and had taken the business admin program and, they, I've heard no complaints. End of the day, regardless of what qualifications you need to get into, the two universities offer very similar business programs. Uh, for Red River, I was seriously considering that as well. I, I also know quite a few people who have gone through that and done amazing things with uh, yes. with their career. For me, I just wanted to uh, get some more real world experience. You know, work part time throughout my post-secondary education. That's what made me go for the U of W. Oh, good stuff. This has been, this has been eye opening, man. I love that you have this sense of saying, you know, I'm an average guy in high school with my gang of guys. Like you said, it's a high school sitcom, right? Where these guys are hanging out in the lunchroom together, talking together. And, and they're part of a clique that's not doing anything spectacular, not winning provincial championships or not, you know, uh, um, or, or, you know, winning the cyber Titan cyber defense project or whatever because there's some cool programs there or being a part of the football team there's a big football team in dakota too yeah. but but you still find your way and you still find this sense of satisfaction and it's still super important to be on that that kind of exploratory path right just being curious and wondering and trying a few things out i really like the things you shared with us today is there any last comment you'd like to make there mitchell before we shut her down for this week um you know what I, i'm just really happy that there's more programs out there for for kids who are like me because the uh these programs they're not only for you know highly skilled students with amazing marks i was average and i loved it it taught me a, a great lesson about uh what education can be what you can make of it yes so yeah they keep taking opportunities as mr magnifico would say keep collecting dots and um yeah, once again, it's never too late to try anything new. Well, you know what, Mitchell? I super appreciate you being with us this week. Uh, you know, I I love your story, and I love that it's continuing to evolve. And I want to say to you, you call yourself average. You are anything but average. I just see the growth. I see the potential in you. I love what you're doing, and I bet your marks are higher than they've ever been. I just have a gut, <laughs> I just have a gut feeling on that. And if not, you don't have to tell us. Anyway, I just love... I just love that uh, you're in this place and you feel satisfied and you have this sense of I'm on a path. It's important for students to feel like they have a plan and they're on a path. So thanks a lot for being a part of the show. Zoe, thank you for being producing. Akira, thank you for producing. And uh, you know what, Mitchell? Uh, You've inspired a lot of people today. I hope so. Hey, thanks for being with us. And that's the end of Adventures in Careerland for another week, episode three. We'll see you next time.